This episode of Shadowversity is brought to you by the Sword Shirt, which proclaims the truth that every sword enthusiast knows down to their core that swords are awesome. Why? Because swords! That's why. Available through Teespring. Link in the description. Shadowversity. Greetings, I'm Shad. And this is a reply video to Skarlagrim, who has recently made a video about the best weapons for dwarves. And as you might have guessed if you're familiar with my YouTube channel, I have a bit of a vested interest in this subject, having made several videos about it already. Before we begin, I just want to address some of the comments that are saying that Skarlagrim is uh, stealing my idea, which is not the case at all. It's wonderful to have differing opinions on this subject being shared around so we can look at things from a different point of view. So I say more the merrier. And how up myself would I have to be to be upset by the fact that someone else is making a video that's similar to a video that I've pre previously made that will only just help my previous video get more views, continuing a discussion and keeping it more relevant, uh, and also by people watching that video, it's high chances YouTube will, like, it, it all helps, that's what I'm saying. YouTube is many things, okay, but one of the big things it is, it's a discussion where different people can share different ideas and even creators can go back and forth about things that they're interested in. It's not a matter of stealing someone's idea or anything like that because basically every new idea has already been thought of in the past. They're like the discussion, what weapons are best for certain fantasy races, uh, fantasy races has been going on for years. Nerds have been debating on it forever and I'm just one another one of those nerds who's thought about like, oh, I wonder, I wonder. So many creators create videos about topics that other creators have done, and I've also done this in regards to topics Skarlagrim has covered before, like my video, The Names and Terminology of Swords. Skarlagrim did that years before I ever did. But the more videos that are out there that are teaching people the correct terminology and names of things, the better, because it's the higher chances of people learning about this stuff. And in regards to this wonderful, fun discussion, Weapons for Fantasy Creatures, as I mentioned before, we get to look at it from different points of views, because what I find really interesting about Skarlagrim's video is that he came to some different conclusions that I did, and those are the things that I want to talk about. But before I do, okay, I'm fully aware that ultimately this discussion is pointless, okay, because we can never test it in real life for an actual fantasy dwarf with those exact characteristics. And then because characteristics change between fantasy settings, you're never going to be definitively, you know, your, your conclusions will never definitively apply to every single single interpretation. But does that mean we're not going to dedicate a huge amount of brain cells to discussing this topic? Not at all! Why? Because it's fun. So when I say I disagree in some areas, as Skarlagrim clearly disagrees with me in some areas, I'm not saying that I am right and Skarlagrim's wrong, or that he's right and I'm... Well, he's right, I'm wrong. I'm sure you'll figure that out. Of course, I encourage you to watch my previous video, uh, Best Medieval Weapon for Dwarves, and also Skarlagrim's video. There's links in the description, and there's also a card right there that uh, will link you to these videos as well. So, all the videos that I've made about fantasy races, so dwarves, elves, halfling hobbits, gnomes, centaurs, orcs, and the races that I intend to do in the future, it was not a way for me to say these are the weapons that you must use because the o they are the only ones that make sense. No, no. The purpose of me making these videos was to try and encourage you guys in your fantasy role-playing games, if you're world building, if you're writing a story or anything like that, to look at these things from, I guess, a more practical and realistic point of view. And if according to the type of setting and characteristics that your creatures have, you come to different conclusions to me, that's great. I just encourage you to try and think about these things logically. Why? Because it's fun, and it also makes things more believable and immersive. And it might convince you your dungeon masters to give you a certain statistical bonus according to your great weaponry knowledge stuff things to kill things with stuff. Not killing real things, <laughs> okay, uh, unless you do get attacked by an orc in real life. Tell me about it if you do. But still, my thoughts on the subject. And what you'll notice is that uh, me and Skull, we agree on a lot of things, and there are a couple of things that we also disagree on. What we agree on is, of course, the reach factor and pole arms being the most significant weapon that dwarves would really want to use. Skull had some great observations in regards to dwarves having a, you know, a lower point of balance and being able to put more force behind the thrusts of the pole arms, which I think is a great, you know, thought idea. And for me, it was mainly in overcoming the reach disadvantages that dwarves have. 
Something does need to be said though, that Skull, when he was looking at dwarves, he considers dwarves to have higher strength to humans, and when I was comparing dwarves, I was thinking them to have similar strength to human, which ultimately comes down to the type of fantasy setting. I've been told that uh, the dwarves from Warhammer have uh, a higher strength, but it appears that the dwarves from Lord of the Rings, and depending on what versions of D&D, same strength. I'm a 3rd uh, edition, 3.5 edition guy myself for Dungeons and Dragons, and dwarves have the same strength as humans in those settings, but they can take more damage, they're more stocky. I gotta say, I loved Skull's observations about grappling. <laughs> like, thinking about the in the way that he put it, how could you knock over a dwarf, you know, knock him off his feet? Gee, that would be hard. And, and it would just put, make you so vulnerable in the attempt. It makes me think that another tactic a, a dwarf could use could just be to put the shield forward and charge and use their momentum to knock um, guys off their feet because, you know, the guys who are standing up, higher center of gravity, they can get underneath it so easily. They just charge and pull right into their, their knees and be like... <laughs> And they could actually knock over humans pretty effectively with a good charge protected by their shields. Because dwarves have weight on their side. It seems like even with other fantasies and dependent like Dungeons and Dragons, things like that, because they're they're stocky, more sturdy, they are heavier than humans. Yeah, like if they're not uh, if they're not stronger than humans, they generally do seem to be heavier. But if they have weight on their side and strength as well, they could get a lot of momentum. Their velocity would be less because of their stride length. But momentum is a combination of velocity and mass specifically. And uh, so if they have uh, more mass that offsets the loss of velocity, they could do some serious damage in those charges. What's interesting though, even with those differences, we come to so many similar conclusions, but some of the points that we differ on uh, is in regards to axes and swords. And so I, let's talk about that for a bit. First of all, it's clear that Scarlet Grimm and myself are defining axes a bit differently. When he uh, is referring to axes a lot in his video, not always, okay, but he is holding a Dane axe and showing how effective that is. Whenever I say axe, I mainly refer to a single-handed axe because in regards to like medieval weapons and history and stuff, the axe features more prominently as a single-handed weapon and, re and less so as a double-handed weapon. There's exceptions to this, for instance, like the Dane axe, what Skalagrim is using, and of course you can consider the halberd or pole axe as axes as well. But I put them in the category of pole arms, and this is what I mean. So I did not mention Dane Axe in my previous video because I mentioned halberds and pole axes, and in my mind, those are like Dane Axes plus, <laughs> with a stronger point for thrusting and other things like that. And so that covers the bases or the advantages that a Dane Axe could bring, but then they offer more advantages because of the greater reach. In regards to one-handed weapons, I still don't think they're a good pick because uh, they are so limited in reach. Now, it's interesting, Skull liked them because they were hefty and dwarves are hefty kind of creatures and get some power behind it. And that's a good point. So perhaps dwarves could actually handle a one-handed axe that has a longer haft. Well, it depends on the strength act. If they have greater strength than humans, then perhaps they would be able to handle and redirect a, uh, an axe that's also longer for one-handed, which would make them more viable for a one-handed weapon. But if they have the same strength, I really don't think I'm not sure it would work as well. And so we came to similar conclusions about shields and also pole arms, but it's the axe versus sword thing. And I do think swords are a better pick overall for dwarves. Why is that? For me, it comes down to reach, ease of use, and versatility. Skull is absolutely right in the fact that axes have a lot more bite in their attacks. But for a shield and single weapon combo, swords have so much more reach than the axes, and then their striking ratio of the weapon is so much more. And this is interesting because range is such an issue with dwarves, and they could have a big advantage in getting in close. But once you're in close, the, like with an axe, if you've got the head, it's harder to strike on the head you know, to the legs of your opponent because they can, you know, cover with their shields and kind of get in close. Uh, but with a sword, because you've got more striking ratio, you can still hit the guys in their legs, of course, depending on armor, because armor is the other issue. Swords would, of course, be useless against opponents wearing heavy amounts of armor. If they've got big, thick greaves and other things like that, then, of course, they're not a good pick. So it depends on situation. Next, let's throw away the shield and have a look at two-handed weapons. And we completely agree. Pole arms, absolutely. Uh, overcome the reach bit. They have a lot of bite. They can be used for thrusting as well. And they just really work and complement dwarven characteristics. I still think that's more of a battlefield weapon. In regards to adventuring, it's a bit different because you're kind of acting 
actively looking for trouble as an adventurer, so you'd want to be well equipped. So, you know, I don't think it's uh, unreasonable that a dwarf would carry around a pole arm. But what about a side arm? And that's where I was thinking swords, still a very good pick. And these are my reasons. Yeah, uh, in regards to longsword, the dwarves would be disadvantaged in regards to their stride length, but in my mind, no more so than really any other type of weapon. And it really depends on how you fight with the sword. Uh, you can fight in a more defensive way and force the opponent to do the long strides to get around you. And the thing that I think just really works well with a dwarf using a two-handed sword is that they can do a high guard and basically not have to worry about their legs because their high guard protects their legs because they're so short and the opponent's weapon is already positioned at a higher, uh, you know, position to them. So I can't really show here, but you know, a dwarf using a good high guard, uh, deflecting the blows and then coming around to do, you know, the reverse hits, uh, attacks, you can thrust the leg and all the way they're being protected far more so than if they were using an ax because they can still, you know, they have the cross guard to protect their hands and uh, then they have all the other advantages that a sword has as well. Reach, and versatility, and greater, op more options in regards to thrusting versus cutting. But gee, it'd be so easy for a dwarf to get in attacks underneath the guards of their, you know, human-sized opponents and not be vulnerable, because the problem with a human trying to attack underneath the guard of an opponent is that their head is completely uh, open to a counterattack. But still, this ultimately comes down to a simple difference of opinion, because Skull is perfectly justified in thinking that the longsword isn't as good for a dwarf. Of course, we both agree that a polearm is a better pick on top of that. I mean, it's much better against people in armor, because if you're fighting people in armor, uh, uh, sword? No, not, not really a good pick. So there you go. Just my thoughts in regards to Skylagrim's recent video, continuing this great discussion. I hope you've enjoyed, and I hope to see you again. Until that time, farewell. <coughs> Sorry, snooze.